What we've got here is a 1964 EH Holden uh, sedan. They all come in sedans or a wagon or a ute, but there was no coupes or anything like that in this. So this car here, young bloke's bought it for his dad for his birthday, come as a paint job and turned into this. I think the dad likes to go a bit fast. So what we've got here is Dean, our main fabricator, has done all the floor, done chassis work. As you can see, big tubs. You know, if you walk this way, you're gonna see some rust. So we've got to repair the rust, which is normal. And then Dean's done all this fabrication in here. So he's set up all the suspension, made all the parts. We bought the chassis rails, so that's all we've had to do there. And then from there, he's getting ready to do the tin work. And we're just waiting for the fuel tank to come back so as we can put that in. With this, they didn't run this bigger wheels. The owner wanted some nice deep dish wheels, so we've done a deep dish wheels on it, front and rear. As you can see in here, we've got the chassis rails connected to the subframe. This thing's running a six-speed manual, so that creates a few more issues because we've got to fit everything in. These gearboxes are very high, so the trans-tunnel firewall area just doesn't fit. Another one with a different front end. We've got a late model front end on it. Better drivability, better suspension. This one's going to have air con, no power steering though. Uh, again, a bit of a driver, but this little small bike makes somewhere in the vicinity of 600 horsepower. So the whole EH won't weigh 1,400 kilos, you know, so 3,000 pounds ish. So there's, there's a good power to weight ratio on this thing. But to do this, we need to fully engineer the car because it's got a front and rear suspension change, full chassis, everything needs to be fully engineered. So we'll have to do brake test, torsion test, lane change test, everything on this car. Um, again, from the outside, it's gonna look like a factory car, nice color red of some sort. And then the wheels, but nothing radical on the outside, nice door gaps and body alignment, but that's about it, no real modifications. But everything has to go under the bonnet, so the air cleaner and stuff like that. So Dean's had to fabricate all the sump and modify it. So we had to lower the engine down a fair way. I think it's down about 40 mil. So it's a fair bit of work to get this in. So then uh, we've also had to think about things like the exhaust and stuff like that. So when you fit in all the exhaust, all this stuff has to fit in through this little gap through here, which is a bit of a uh, mess around because there's a lot of a lot of work to go through a little area. So if you want to spin over there, Dean's just working on the chassis rail. So if you go and have a look at what Dean's doing, and then Dean, you can point to the area that you're working on. So I'm just replacing the lower uh, A pillar, all the internal, the front of the sill. So all the front of the sill on both sides and A pillars are rusted out. But we also had to strengthen it up because now that we've got all the cross member and cross braces going through here, these are a fairly weak car, so we've got to make sure that everything's solid. Once Dean's done all the cross members and all the rust sections, then he'll run all the exhaust through it. 